Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Filmmaking Production Diary. Um, I'm your host, Miguel Ortega, and this is my co-host, Trama. Hello, everyone. And today we have a special guest, one of my favorite people in this entire world, uh, Shraga Weiss. Hello. Hello, hello. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. It's exciting. <laughs> I love your intro. That was cool. You see how you see how cool we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Shraga, gave that message. The what? That definitely conveyed the message of how cool you are. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Intro, yeah. The first time we saw that, we were like, "Damn, well, those people are cool. pretty damn cool." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so yeah. So, tell us a little bit about about yourself, Shraga. People that don't know you. Okay. Um, I'm originally from from Israel. I came uh, to the States to, well, actually first I went to Canada to study. I left Israel to study animation. In you you studied at VF, VFS? At VFS, yeah. This was what, 2005? Yeah. Something like that. Many years ago. Um, and um, then my first job out of school was at Rhythm and Hughes. That's where I met Miguel. Together we hung out. Yeah. yeah. So we, we go way back. almost instantly we became friends. Yeah, yeah. We sit, you, you sat yeah. next to me, and I'm like, "Who is this dude?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we, we had to... a little bit of friendly competition going on, if I remember correctly, with those stupid uh, diorama characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Shraga. Oh, sorry, takes... I should be knocking anything, and I'm lying here. No, it's fine. Shraga really loves. Uh, he's uh, he really cares for the quality of everything he does. So. Even back then, he he wanted to make the best half an inch diorama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back at that, like in the movie, they're like, they're like a two pixel. pixels, maybe. Yeah, but yeah when I to... think back about like how how much they criticized like all the models and stuff, I'm like, you guys realize those things were like half an inch. So so funny. Yeah, um, just a few pixels, right? Like you look at that. They look and really. I, I also remember it was like one of the first times where they where they had the movie they wanted to make it in the resolution for um like IMAX like like this huge yeah right, the night at the museum but I I didn't recall working on those like ever making renders bigger than like 720 by 540 like how's this gonna be anyway. yeah yeah um, and and you, you, went out, you started working on Tokyo Drift. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you not there on Tokyo Drift? But I, I wasn't on Tokyo Drift. I was just on the, the night at the museum stuff and then Superman. Right, right. You worked but, on uh, the T-Rex thing. On that. Yeah, it was so funny because we were like, we were like, at Rhythm and Hughes in particular, the modelers were like the bastard children. Like they literally kept us under the stairs like Harry Potter. <laughs> <Remember>? <laughs> like it was, it used to be a broom closet for sure. Oh, it was, it was insane. They, yeah, well, they, they put all the freelancers, right? They shoved us into this like ad hoc room that was like a library and they, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, but it, there's some, lasting friendships out of there right like i met you there i met pete and scott and ann and shannon, shannon was there like all these people yeah that i'm sort of in touch with to this day so it was like a special little room we had there yeah um after that what did i do after that i went to was it image move no i went back to I'll actually skip. Oh, you forgot the skip, best. Skip oh. something that happened. You <laughs> talking, talking about what happened after that? Uh, I went to a studio that was really the bottom of the pit, the worst studio ever. That which I won't fight. mention. Huh? Was that food fight? Well, yeah, you just gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of my resume. Here we go, dude. I literally <laughs> watch that trailer at least once a year just to like make me feel better about everything. It's so well, funny. It's, it's one of those things that I, I question whether if, if you get, you know, if, if you take the right drug and you watch it, it's it, genius. It's so bad that it becomes good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so um, and then, uh, so yeah, we don't, we don't talk about that. 
after that, I went to Israel, which was another very questionable <laughs> operation where they tried to do a feature film there in animation called um, uh, The Wild Bunch. And that was a period of time where, you know, every CG movie that was coming out had a theme. So they were doing one about about bugs and then about fish. I'm talking Pixar and, and uh, DreamWorks, right? And so the people were thinking, okay, what hasn't been done yet? So that was a movie that was supposed to be about talking plants. <laughs> There's like, they haven't done that for a reason. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It, it never came out, perhaps for a good reason. I don't want to knock that either. There were some really good people there. And it had its moments, put it that way. Uh, after that, I I went, I came back to the States to, and worked at Image Movers Digital. Yeah, Zemeckis' um, company. Yeah, Zemeckis' company. That, that also like some down. of the heaviest hitters in the industry at the time, right? Like they had. Yeah, I know. I was so excited about it. And yeah. it ended up being. Um, a, disappointing because it had so much potential but they ended up closing it down after two years yeah um and after that was weta after that i was i went to weta and i started <clears throat> kind of focusing on on faces and facial anatomy at image movers digital that's where i got really into that stuff there were some really there were some really good people there with a lot of experience in that, and I learned from them a lot. And then at Weta, you, you worked on some of the the really big stuff there, right? Didn't you work on um, uh, Kubo? Wasn't it Kubo? Koba. Yeah, Koba from. Yeah, Koba. that was that was a Weta. Yeah, that 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 was the best character in that in that film. I think so. <laughs> uh, like all everything, he looked the best. His performance yeah. was the best. He was the best character, and his expressions really sold it. Yeah, that's messed up face of it. He was, he was incredible. Yeah. He had so much personality and yeah. I, I definitely got lucky that I got to work on him. That, but, that movie, I literally, the only memory I have of it is like them on the horse, but then the machine gun scene is like such a fucking amazing scene. Yeah. Right? I mean, the entire movie, I, yeah, is the, the trilogy, the entire trilogy is one of those like really special movies with yeah that with with really good effects like real quality effects in terms of just what matters to me most in cg which is making characters appealing and believable and and um so it's it's rare i mean even though movies are made all the time with really big effects having like characters that you can like relate to because yeah. of how they emote is rare you know, like yeah. my favorite char characters, I can I can count. You know, I can count them on one hand. Um. So, but that one definitely had a few really memorable characters in it. Yeah. Um. And yeah, that was probably the most in ended up being the most interesting project because I also worked on the Hobbit, which is really what got me excited. But uh, um, it turns out that Planet of the Apes was more interesting in that way. Um, that, that Planet of the Apes. Uh, that one in particular, part two, whenever I see someone on the internet say, oh, CG sucks, I usually, I stop because there was no winning this war, but I would always just grab one photo from that movie and just paste it into the comment section because that's like the one where you're like, okay, at this point, you're just you're just silly. Do you know what right. I mean? Like when but you CG see, sucks as opposed to what, like animatronics? Or? Practical effects or whatever. Like whenever oh, you would see an image from that Planet of the Apes, you're just like, guys, this war is over. Like, you're just, uh, you just sound like a mother now that says her son right. is the best looking of all. You know what I mean? Like, get out I of here. I still have an affection for the for the old school stuff. Oh, like, I love you. I, I love, love the original it. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. But to say CG sucks, that's, it's, yeah. To me, when I break it down, it's like you can't compete with like the physicality of real effect, of practical effects right it, there is something about it and like cg characters always feel like they, they lack a little bit of weight and physicality but the magic of cg for me comes in how the creatures can deform which is something you can't really do in yeah. practical effects right like even if you have a silicon mat that's really elastic whatever there's a limit of what you can do in how you deform it and there's something really 
magical about about that. That's something that the old school sculpture artists, you know, can't. They couldn't deform their sculptures, and that's a cool thing about CG for sure. Yeah. Um, awesome. So you fit. You worked on the Hobbit, and then you after that you came back to to the states, right? After that, not so. I, I took a little. I took a little break. I was in Israel for a few months, and then I came. I guess this is too much detail, but I came back to. No, it's, uh, it's, it's good. <laughs> I came back to the States and I worked in a couple of these like startups where the focus was digital humans. Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I worked on, on the Michael Jackson project that where he came and he did his postmortem. Um, that was the live show. The live show. Yeah. The live show. And I was, I basically, I was in charge of his face. And the truth is that the quality of that thing is much better than what people realize. I think I recently saw some of it with a little bit higher resolution and someone leaked it out onto YouTube. Um, but for the time, 2014, it was actually pretty really damn good. Yeah. And, and it's a shame that what ended up being on YouTube as the formal uh, take on it is just like what had, you know, you, the people who were there felt the real experience. But because of, of very, very technical reasons, it's just the fact that it's on cable and it was shot like at 725, 40, and then put on YouTube. It's just like he ends up this small. Yeah. And it just doesn't do justice to the really good work that was done at that company. Um, and that, from there, I rolled into another company where um, this project w is, was done by ILM, but it had its first kind of before it went to ILM. The original iteration uh, was you guys. The original iteration, yeah, was for the ABBA virtual. Um, I, was in, I was in charge. I basically built all the faces for the ABBA group and, and their facial expressions. And, and um, since then, I've been working at, at, at Blur I, um, and having a blast because it's a really fun place to work. And you, what, what's, your, what's your role over there? You're you're pretty high up there on the face team, yeah. I I am basically I'm in charge of the face team. It's, it's a small team, but yeah. Yeah. And I have <clears throat> I'm also I overlook a lot of the uh, of the uh, facial anatomy of of the characters, um, and I help improve um, on the facial anatomy. And on the and everything that that entails, so that's kind of my role. I also sometimes with with the body anatomy as well, but mostly the face. Cool. And cool. you know, Love, Death, and Robots, and and uh, some other really cool projects that are in production right now that I can't talk about. You, you worked on some of the the really impressive faces on on Love, Death, Robots, like the some of the more photo real ones. Yeah, I actually freelanced. I did one freelance gig with Yunan and Maj where um, I did probably what was one of the most realistic, most realistic characters as far as human realistic characters uh, was the blonde uh, character, the woman. Her name is Greta. Scene. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the shorts there. Um, she turned out really well. They did a really good job. That was and, good. Joke. What's that? Who did that? The, it was Union and Maj in France. Okay. So I did yeah, I did that as a freelance. It's actually, you know, Blur is my full time gig. But then I then I was working freelance with Blur. So I You I can took do it. projects. Yeah. Um yeah, but now I'm staff. Uh so it's awesome. Yeah. And we got you so we got you to work on this for free. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys wow. work really hard and work at wet end and rise up to the top of blur you could work for, for free <laughs> to work and mr mayo here which i will uh, on, on which, mayo yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, who is an awesome character yeah uh, very different i'll talk about it in a minute but uh i mean it's a pleasure to work to be actually working um with you again and with tran who i haven't actually worked with before 
No, we never worked together. <laughs> no. Yeah, but you, you guys have known each other now for, for a long yeah, time. For a long time. Dec- yeah. Over a decade. Yeah. But whenever I come down to Los Angeles, we hang out. And, yeah. and uh, it's been a long time coming. It's about time I help you with, with one of your uh, amazing projects. Thank you, sir. We're super happy to have you on here. So do you want to take over the screen? Do you want to just show some of the stuff? Uh, I think I'm already sharing, so I don't know if that's... Uh, so just press this. There you go. Okay, so this is our dude. So I yeah, I had no idea what what was coming, you know, because like I saw Voice of the Hallow and it blew me away, as I'm sure it blew everybody away. And the, the facial in Voice of the Hallow was really interesting because i felt that on the one hand you had this like stop motion feel to it and there were supposed to be puppets but that didn't hold you back from giving them an organic feel to their face which came out really cool like i, I saw that and i really appreciated it. and kudos to chris i think he did the uh, facial on that right yeah, this is the best. he was on last week yeah so i thought that was really cool so when i saw this guy i'm like okay now we're more in Muppet land. It's even <laughs> more basic in some ways. Yeah. But, you know, and, and the nice thing about it was you didn't really tell me what you were looking for. You just said he's like a chameleon. I'm like, okay, I guess I have some freedom to make my interpretation. So it's like, how do we how do we exploit the fact that it's CG and make it more interesting than, a, than just a Muppet? And because, of course, we want him to be we have the ability to make it much more expressive that way. Which, which, by the way, I should say, like when we handed this to you, and I mean, had we passed this on to anybody, we were just afraid of like, how the hell do you make shapes for this thing, right? Because he's basically <laughs> like like Beaker, right? right? So we're like, he's Beaker with chameleon eyes and then like uh, vanilla ice hair. How do we make this? <laughs> how do we make... How is this guy even going to move? Like, I I couldn't picture him I with can, a different expression yeah, than I that. I couldn't picture it either because right. he just does this. He just does this. So when <laughs> right. we gave it to you, we, we knew you were going to do a good job, but we thought, oh, my gosh, Shraga is going to have such a hard time, not because you don't know how to do great facial stuff, but because what is it? What the hell is this thing? Right. right? And I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> I was like, what the? But... I, I appreciate the challenge of something like this, even though I've never done anything even remotely like this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the fun thing is you just kind of experiment. And you also said he needs to be mischievous and he needs to be all these things. And it's like, well, the first thing, you know, uh, the first thing you need to have someone feel surprised or mischievous or whatever is for them to have brows. So I felt like we could, <laughs> with the shape, we could fake that and, and introduce yeah. that a little bit. Because without without brows, you're not gonna be able to to make to do any, to really convey expression. Sure. So I guess the, those were the first that I tried to do was a little bit of like, okay, what's he gonna look like if he's angry or or mischievous with a smile? So and it's it's funny to see that there's actual range here. To at the end of the day, there is all. A lot you could do with a character like this, and then I, I love the I love those in, in particular. I really like them. Yeah. If you surprised, wait, you'll see. I'm working on on some more advanced shapes. You'll see what's coming. I'm, I, it's gonna be cool. Um, so just, just so people know, so so we're doing we're using the the face AR kit system, which is basically 52 face shapes, but that that doesn't mean uh, we're we're Shrug is doing like combination shapes, which we'll get into later, but uh, the base of them is 52 shapes that the iPhone can recognize and transfer the animation that you do with your iPhone onto these characters. Right. So I'm, I'm now in the process. I is What I'm showing now is the base 52, um, and I'm in the process of working on, on combos. Um, and of course, the the beginning element of any character is is the topology which is what it's you know the lines of geometry that is what i use to deform the character and that was something that was handed over to me by tran and is that and i was surprised <laughs> that it actually 
not surprised, but like with a character like this, you wouldn't expect if you're just building it straight and not thinking about how it's going to deform, you're, you know, nine out of 10, you're not going to have what you need, but I was actually able to do quite a lot with the. Well, Chris, the Chris gives me, gives, gives me grief. He like, criticizes. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, right. He gives you shit for its apology. Yeah, he does. And I, I try to fix it. Let me, let me so, well, I would, I, I could do that. There's a couple things that I would do, but I think it has enough range where, you know, it's always such a bitch changing topology once you start working and animating. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so those are like the surprise brow up. Shape. Yeah, that's the surprise that if you, well, that's not going to work now, but I need to make a combo for that. But if we're going to combine it with like <laughs> <laughs> that thing, which is, a, it's a little bit South Park here, right? With those lines. <laughs> Um, but I think it's, uh, like that's, a freak, I mean, a freak out look. Yeah. That's such a good, uh, that's such a good, it almost has a little bit of, um, uh, Morty. Do you know what I mean? Like he does that face with the weird mouth shape and Rick and Morty. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Rick and Morty. You're right. With the, with the a awkward. Little, yeah, mask. totally. The eyes See, maybe maybe that's, happen. maybe that, I was thinking. I don't know where this I came up with this. I didn't look at anything. I was just like, yeah. Really, what I came up with is like, you know, I know the anatomy terminology, but it's like now we're doing a cheek squint. Okay, but he doesn't have cheeks. He doesn't. What <laughs> he could it be? He doesn't have anything. Yeah. Right? What could it actually be for him? So I just kind of came up with that. And also, I think a, a really good pointer that you gave me was that he should be fleshy in the sense that. When I move anything, his eyes are going to move. So there's a lot of. <clears throat> so I tried to accentuate things, and just, you know, you got to kind of feel the character, just give him a lot of personality, and you know, not be afraid to push things, especially if it's a kind of cartoonish or. or especially if it's Mayo. Right, it's Mayo. Exactly. <laughs> Look at those eyes, man. Yeah, those eyes are awesome. So yeah, so he has like the butthole I mean, they're eyes. So, they're so cool the way they closed. Um, I think it's really much more interesting than regular eyes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, like, I felt like there's just uh, so much to explore here, even though he's such a small character. The one of the things you guys are going to have to do is find some solution to rig his ears. I don't know if you've thought about that already, but right now there's no motion on the ears. Yeah, his yeah. ears should have something, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure, because they're so prominent on his face. Yeah, you know. Uh, but even if, like, when he smiles, you you pull them up or you fold them back a little bit or something like that, it could be fun. Um, so this is like, <laughs> it becomes. So this is like a more That's of a cool. what a squint, which you would do with lids, normally for him. You know, it's just like how to your eyes will narrow etc so that was the idea is to kind of narrow his eyes but not to a point where they close as opposed to the blink it looks like a different kind of motion. when you do that with the, with the haircut he kind of looks like uh i would be careful about <laughs> like that those guys get crazy when you criticize them which oh this one so this one i think <laughs> You know, you add, the fun thing is once you start adding them up, right? I think you're going to have to do a little bit of keyframing to make sure you you actually exploit the range that he has. Yeah. Because the mocap isn't necessarily going to trigger all these things. Another big challenge here is the fact that his neutral is like almost like a frowny face. And uh, usually characters have like a straight mouth, but um, we're still going to, we're going to, because it's just so much his character to have this frowny face, we'll, we'll make sure that it works um, as, as a starting point where you can even frown even go, lower. go further than that. Yeah. Uh, that's very interesting. 
this is more <laughs> this is more of your just muppet yeah that's okay. motion right this is this is your beaker if you want them yeah yeah so that's i think also because in the end of the day he is a muppet so we need to keep some of that in the earth some of that feel in there and this one is a cool one i don't know if you notice this one where he he gets rid of his kind of lips when he presses them i like that that's really cool that's very cool yeah I think you'll, you'll definitely be able to find ways to, to use this. And always keep in mind also that um, it's always better to use both sides of the shape at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, because when once it's split to left and right, it's never going to look as good as using them at the same time. Um, that's the smile, which you uh, you gave me a shape to start with for this one yeah we 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 started with that. that that was because we were like what the hell does this guy look like when he smiles right like it was just for us to have yeah oh yeah you have to feel the character and it's so hard to think what it would look like if it goes from here <laughs> right? to, to there yeah, really and I, I think it, re it it really works and i yeah, like the yeah. fact that it's not you know that it, it's not symmetrical and it's not just like an arc going this way but it has more character in it and yeah, it's really just about feeling the character and saying what you know trying to think what makes sense and this is more that. of a freak out this will I also work that. good with the uh well that's cool too but yeah that is <laughs> so, great. he's got such a weird, weird. face and... <laughs> <laughs> oh man that looks great <laughs> I mean, there's so much you can do with him, which is really, I wouldn't have expected it myself that there would be so much range here. Uh, you know, this is, of course, the upper and the lower. And you guys are, you guys are thinking about a solution for his teeth, right? Oh, yeah. you mean the, yeah, I would, I would just build gums. Like where his when he's going up like that, I don't want. I wouldn't. I don't think really long teeth is a good idea. Yeah. Right. Oh no. Of course not. Yeah. But, so yeah. Once you have that, try and send that my way so I can. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do I have that shape? Did you send that to me, Gil? Yeah. You guys should have. You already have it up, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, what now, this one I'm not in love with. His no sneer. I'm. I'm still working on it a little bit. Yeah, but do um, I, I get I get it because it's what 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 no sneer? Do you know what right. I mean? What is there? No, but it's the same thing for the brow. Like what brows, right? Oh, no, I know, but that's it's it. You have to really you have to kind of become more creative than you you usually like. You usually you, you're trying to match something that is real. So at least you have some kind of a guide. Whereas here, you have to figure out. What yeah, the hell does out. a sneer look like for this guy? Like totally, but it's what makes it extra fun in a way. And, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it's fun. I like I like this kind of stuff. I mean, because you never yeah. really get to be this out of the box ever, like ever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe with talking plants. No. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to put one. Um. I hope no one from from that company sees this and thinks I'm <laughs> for saying that. But anyway, um, so then there's the you know the the, the pucker fun, funneler shapes, which are also yeah, I love those too. Um, which are also fun. Here, I actually thought a little bit also like you know about those kind of cartoony characters that have a lot of range and can really pull out their mouths and. Um, yeah, it's just going to be really cool once I get those combos in and get these things working together. Let's see, we have some comments here. Um, so we have some comments here. People are saying, I checked out your website. Very nice characters and sculpt work. Um, yeah. Cool. Thanks, whoever that was. <laughs> Chatty on fire. He's here every week. Oh, thanks, Chatty on fire. So is Bobby R. We have a few regulars. Yeah. Nice. Um, that's the jaw open. 
I think because there's a lot of motion, he's a very, um, there's a, a lot of motion and a lot of fall off everywhere. We're going to have to do quite a bit of combos uh, to make them work. This is what I'm finding, but. So tell people um, what combos are if they they're not they're not sure what it is. So for example, an easy one would be like let's say he's looking in and looking up. So really what what we're seeing here is just doubling up of the vertices where you take one shape, you add the other shape and you just get the combined motion of vertices, right? Where there's no interference. So, of course, this shape as a look in up combination needs to be cleaned up, as you can see. And when you clean yes, it up, so you, you just, it yeah. yeah, so it looks each shape individually looks great. But when they're both right. together at the same time, they kind of overextend each other and they make the, the thing look broken. So a combination shape would be basically a, a third shape that says, hey, when these two things are turned on at the same time, trigger this third shape that just kind of tones things down or makes them work in unison. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any example of that right now, but <laughs> next exactly. version, um, I would have been able to show, show exactly what that would look like. But you know, another one, like if obviously the, this is like the funneler by itself and, and the parker by itself, if you put them together, it's out of control. <laughs> so that's an obvious candidate for, for a combination shape. Yeah, that's one. We did a test, which which I'm not going to pull up. And that those were the shapes that, that really broke. Um, comment, those squishy eyes. Ha, ha, ha. Damn, I love it. Yeah, I, I love those <laughs> eyes. The first time Shraga showed us those eyes, we were like, because we were a little bit afraid. We we're like, is this crap going to work? Because I'm like, I want the eyes to kind of move independently of each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, because Mayo's got to be, he's on a completely different world than everyone else. He's, he, it, you kind of want to look at him and think that he's not the brightest one, but he's actually the smartest one in the colony, maybe second to the queen, but he's just on a, Completely different dimension than everyone so yeah. we those things are just going to make him look like he's that much more awkward and lost but uh later on you'll you'll find out that he actually is very smart um not sure what else i mean because all these primary shapes they really make a lot more sense once you start combining them and uh I think this guy's pretty hard to do. <laughs> so like what it's is very it? challenging. It's so, very I've been doing this, I've been focusing on faces since 2008, like I said, and I've never done anything remotely like even like this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um I also when I saw it I'm like like I was so excited to be helping you guys out on on one of your beautiful shorts and I, I just expected it would be something similar to what I've seen and I'm like Holy shit! What is this? I try to change it up every time. It's yeah, oh yeah, and I and I love it. I love the care. I love the amount of character you feel from from your from these two characters that I've seen so far. Um, yeah. They just emote so much so much personality, even though they're very simple. Yeah, and um, that's because that's because you guys design your stuff very precisely and you take it very seriously so i knew it was going to be something good but i was just shocked by what it was <laughs> the design stage for these guys took a while and we we originally were going to do a completely different short with gnome and, and i had done some designs for these two guys which we still have never shown and uh we uh i just kept coming back to it and then we sh i showed them to my niece one day and she she gave them the names. She was like, "That's Cot, and that's obviously Mayo." Yeah, no she, way. Says, well, she just yeah. says obviously, like, obviously, of course, obviously. That's the name. And yeah. and she's six years old, right? So and and I was like, I could never un unthink of those names. I'm like, those are great freaking names, right? Because so good. Yeah. and then she's like, yeah, he looks like a cotton ball, the guy with the the, 
the little balls all over. And then this guy, she didn't say that, but I'm, I was trying to figure out like how the hell she came up with those names. And then she thinks that this guy looks like mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, those are great. And then she, and then she's like, you know, if you use them, you have to pay me. Yeah, she is. <laughs> She is so related to you, Miguel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, I so I told her exactly. if when the movie comes out, we'll give her two hundred bucks. And that was in December, <laughs> right? Six years old, so like six months is like an eternity. And I talked to her like last week, and she's like, "So uh, those two hundred dollars? Don't think I forgot, right?" And I'm like, "Get the hell out of here!" Two hundred bucks is like two million bucks. For it's like two million old. bucks. We're like, "What are you gonna buy with two hundred bucks?" But uh, yeah. I should just you, you don't give her those two hundred bucks. I should put those two hundred bucks in a in a in a freaking uh, ETF and just be like, here, you pull them out when you're thirty. You'll be a millionaire. <laughs> no, don't be one of those uncles. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, you gotta yeah. be true to your word. Give her the two hundred bucks. I gotta give her the two hundred bucks. She's gonna go on a shopping spree. At, at, yeah, at Toys R Us if that's still a thing. Is that a thing? That's not a that's thing. Not a thing. <laughs> Doesn't exist. Should I maybe take some questions from someone, or I don't know how, how does this work? Well, so so all right. So when when you're starting the shape, like how where are you even sculpting your shapes? Are you doing everything in Maya, or are you using something else? Um, a project like this, I could do a lot of it in Maya. Yeah. So you're just moving the vertices and soft selections and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean you got the sculpting tools that were imported at one point from Mudbox. Yeah. And they work very similarly. So when it's something that's clean like this, that doesn't have a lot of detail, there's actually a lot of advantages to working with Maya because you can actually do all the traditional, you know, selecting edges and pushing and pulling, whatever. Sure. And get, you know, kind of precise about things. And when you is like I, I haven't used like the mud box brushes inside of um, Maya, but when you like smooth, can you like turn on uh, affect all layers, turn that on and off? Um, there's actually a tool that does that within uh, Simplex that I use. Okay. Yeah. And Simplex, for those that don't know, is Blur's open source. Um, facial blend shape uh, management system, which is pretty amazing that they, they put that out there for, for everybody to use because apparently it's incredible. Yeah, so that's, you know, so there's, I'm not sure if I have the same version that's out for the, for the public, but there's tools there that help me with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Does anybody have uh, have any questions for Shraga on his uh, facial um, workflow? Some people are saying uh, how they like the simplicity of it. Um, like the squishy eyes. The squishy eyes, yeah. Uh, the mouth press action. Yeah, I really like that shape in particular. I, d I don't remember seeing that one. Um, which one? The mouth, the mouth press. press. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easily, it's you, you know, you can e easily overlook it because it's subtle, but it gives them. But it, it's such a beautiful little subtle touch you can do, like in speech or or it just you know if he's wanting to express, you know, that he's maybe um, hold, holding something back or. It's such an important shape of pressing lips together. Uh, Bobby R has a question for you. He's asking if simplex is similar to uh, uh, shapes. I think so, yeah. I haven't used shapes so much, but I think it's the same idea, yeah. That's the stuff that Chris was showing us the other day in the call. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he was showing shapes. Yeah, it was... Um... It's definitely shapes. Yeah, I think it's a. I think he developed it, um, and Chris was helping him out with it uh, during the making of the Nino. And Chris did Chris did all the face shapes um, on the Nino uh, using shapes. Yeah, he did some cool things with with it, like that cat creature, right? 
Yeah. 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 That was really cool. Yeah. There was a lot. There was a lot of uh, blend shapes on. The thing about the Nino characters is there was so much face shape stuff done, and they're basically in one or two shots. Whereas <laughs> it really was was a waste. Uh, yeah. These guys. Story were of my life. Huh? Story of my life. Story of your life. Yeah. You know how many blend shapes I've done that never made it to screen. So another question for you: uh, Is there any other plugins you use for facial setup? Plugins, um, or tools, whatever. Not really. Um, not really. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean the the basic rig for a face can be very basic. Like you could, it could just be. You of course need joints for your uh, teeth and tongue and head, and you need for your for your eyes. You got to have like targeted, um, you know, uh, shapes that you put there for the that move the eyes. Like uh, that's what I'm looking for. You know, you, you got to do some really basic rigging um, to get a, a full face operational. And, and, uh, and on top of that, you, you put sorry. shapes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Keep, keep going. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm trying to remember what the name is of, the, of Yeah, you need to you need to put like an ink constraint on your eyes. Where you're you're constraining your eyes to to a point, and that's, that's probably how, just more rigging centric stuff. Right? Yeah, but but I do that. You know, if I do my own characters or whatever, then you have I have to. Do yeah, that you'll stuff. do that. You'll do that part yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. dude, let me ask you. So, like, on a shape like the pucker, where the lips are coming out to a point like that, and the face, the mouth is changing so drastically. So how how do you go about a shape like that one in particular, right? Are you because I know you're saying you're using this, you're doing this inside of of uh, Maya. So like, what are you doing? You're just selecting all the edges, and then you're using a soft select to initially pull it, and then, like, how are you? How are you doing? How are you getting that? Like, how are you? Yeah, getting just, I mean, in the end of the day, people like to talk about, you know, technology and tools and plugins, and I'm kind of old school where it's like, all I really need is push pull. I mean, what do you need to sculpt, right? Yeah, but there's, there's something you about shapes. Tools and, like I, and, you know. Like so, one of the things that people that people maybe don't give enough credit to with the face stuff is it's not just about sculpting a, a different shape, right? It, 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 because it all has to feel it like, work. Yeah. Talking, like all the skin is moving correctly. Yeah. It's not just like, yeah. let me just yeah. grab these vertices and adjust them because then it'll look like there's, what we used I'm to really, call it a tippet, like sure. dead space. I take those things for granted, but that's definitely a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I've, I've done this so long that I kind of do it without, you know, I do it as part of my sculpting. Yeah, because I'm all about making things operational and deformable, and I, you know, so a lot of times I look, I'll look at, you know, I'll be, I'll be doing things like this with the topology on, or. You know, a very good indicator of how things are moving is the texture. Yeah. Right? Because, of course, you don't yeah, want your texture don't... stretching. Yeah, that's actually... You don't want it to stretch when you use, you know, when you have multiple shapes going at once. So it's important to keep in mind the directionality of the shape and where it's going. And, you know, when you have a lot of, when you have experience doing this and you know this shape is going in a different direction than that shape, but I do know they're going to need to be used to get together down the line. So I have to make sure that I limit the fall off on this one. And, but it, it's just things that I kind of, I now that we're talking about it, then yeah, I, I obviously I, I, I think about all that stuff, but I just, it's in the flow of my sculpting now that I Yeah, it's, it's second it. nature. Can you show some of those shapes on? Like, can you can you slide through them with the wireframe on, just so people could see like what what, what we're talking about? Like, you could see the whole face is moving. It's not just, even though from certain angles it might just look like the lips are moving. 
the whole thing has to be moving and have a, a, a natural fall off or else it'll look it'll look fake right there's even motion back here yeah but when but but i don't really think about it too much like i let it you know i'm thinking i want motion to around this point if some vertices are moving here you know i just i let it happen but what you don't want is the volume you you have to think also another thing that is i guess second nature is volume re retention right so those cheeks as they go from puffy to narrow as this shape moves um you have to make sure that it's moving in the right direction all the things we just talked about but also you want to make sure that even though it's cartoony and exaggerated it has to be believable there's and, uh, there's if, if, if it loses, in the industry we call it going off model right that's just a term that means it doesn't look like the character anymore because you're exaggerating too much or things aren't moving in a way that represents reality to a certain degree even though it's something as wacky as this right um it's you still have to think about those things and if you don't it's just going to lose form and you know so there's certain things so for, this is also a good example where i used to have more motion on the eye because see there's motion almost everywhere but the eye is pretty still so to your point miguel this is one that i intentionally didn't put a lot of eye motion because i knew if i did it would just require way too many combos or whatever to correct it down the line. Yeah. So I intentionally didn't put it there. So it's these, there's definitely a, a tech, a technical element to sculpting shapes that doesn't exist in, in just like your basic sculpting. Yeah. So you need, you really need to have like a little bit of a inclination towards rigging or something like that uh, to do it properly. You know what though it still works because the eyes feel like such separate pieces like they almost feel like buttons right that you could buy it like oh they wouldn't be affected by it right totally they're they are moving very slightly but yeah yeah so yeah just go through a few more shapes just so people could see oh, I, I, thought I, went through all, I thought i went through all of them i may have done it too quickly um so yeah, so yeah, just the, turn the wireframe because it, it it makes me appreciate it much more when I see how much is actually moving. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and then That's you also funny. think about things like, oh, what's gonna happen to the nose? Right? So the nose is, is moving in the opposite direction because it's running on top of the you know, on top on top of his uh I don't know how you would want to call this area, but yeah. Did you call it off model or off character? Off model. Off model is what people usually say, but the, but the, I think they really mean off character. I think that was Tran and I's biggest concern with this guy, and 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 with Cot too. We had a few shapes where we're like, and even with in Voice in the Hollow, we had that where certain shapes felt like a different character, and it makes no sense because you're like, you know, it's an imaginary thing. Well, right. I, mean, I think to try to explain it, like um in real life if it was a real person's face like there are expressions that that person doesn't as who, do as who they are cannot do if you make them do it they become like a different person like it's completely yeah. different face then yeah and that person That's another thing i struggle with is to explain this to people and that is so true what you just said Trent. because even in the industry a lot of people think that you can transfer a shape from one character to the next it's like yeah. but that's yeah, it's a different face. <laughs> a different face. Every that person human anymore. being is so unique to what they are, not only in how they look in neutral, but also in every expression we make. You know, even though we are all the same species, the proportions vary, the shape varies, everything varies. You can use that as a starting point, it will save you time, etc. But it's not really a solution. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of misconception about that out there. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. I, mean, I won't go into the specifics, but people think that, <laughs> you know, there, there's all these systems out there that say that they're creating shapes when really what they are are, are transfers. And, you know, like anything, if, but again, I'm a little old school. So if you don't articulate it, it's not going to look good. Yeah. And yeah, and, so and these, these shapes look amazing, and and 
Netflix. We were like afraid that it looks off model because again, like what the hell does this guy look like? Well, I would have. I don't. I don't know what I would even do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't specialize in what um, Shraga and Chris do, but I would be afraid of fucking up. Oops, I've not put the cast. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I was worried because um, I couldn't even picture it myself. And then just to do the one smile we handed you was like. It like had so many fails, and then you ended right. up. Doing yeah, it. sure. Fire face. I think you showed me up. one fail actually, where yeah, now it looks que creepy and weird, and and we don't understand why. It's because every shape, in a way, is as important as the neutral shape, because yeah. it all needs to maintain the character somehow. Yeah. Yeah, and you just kind of like knocked it out like really, really easy. I so was scared when I saw it too. I'm like, oh, you know. But you may have with so, all my experience and perhaps I, <laughs> this is character is out of my uh, this, this is, is gonna take you down. This is the model that, that ruins you. <laughs> right. This you never recover your career. I don't know what the hell to do with this one. But no, I'm happy you guys like it. And I'm happy I was able to find solutions for this stuff. No, but you made um, it seem so easy. I don't think it's easy, but it it came out like I also I, I had to experiment and see there were certain things I did. I was like, oh no, that's not working and change it. It's not like it's not like I had all these solutions in my head before I started. Sure. Um, Can you do draw open again? Someone is commenting on the back of the detail on the back of the mouth. He's yeah, got I it. love it. <laughs> it's just so puppety. They all, they all yeah, have so a, that's their tongue. Yeah. They all have a that kind of tongue. Yeah. But but it relates back to what we talked about at the beginning. It's like, of course, Jim Henson and the Muppets are amazing and awesome. And there's something really cool about them being practical, but they could never, you know, they, they could never do, um, uh, where did that get? you know, they could never do this, right? No, um, they could not. They could do not. that. And that's, I think that's um, like the added interest of, of doing it this way, which makes it really cool. It's that Kermit. Yeah. Kermit mouth. Well, I mean, yeah, they totally. they have um, Muppet expressions, which yeah. are which are a bit limited. Um, yeah, but, it's it's like they have both. He has both, so it's like combining those two worlds together of what's possible in CG with the fact that he's he is sort of like a Muppet. I think it's also interesting in a sense, like um, Miguel and I don't come from a stylized background, right? We worked on movie like live action movies, so we always thought like. Let's make things real. And then our friends are doing similar things. Like you're always doing stuff that's um, really real and realistic. And we're, we're doing something stylized, I guess. And then, uh, but we, we don't approach it from a, a stylized standpoint. So when we are thinking of facial expressions, you know, if you watch other shorts out there, and that, I mean like really good shorts, the facial stuff is like very, not how... I ever think you know what i'm talking about like yeah like there's a lot of like um squishy and stretchiness even in the animation and we right. don't think like that we're like well let's just <laughs> make it on form and on i don't know and then we yeah, end up with something true. like really unusual <laughs> i guess it's but it's true. Crazy. They, they do it way much more like tex avery style like yeah, yeah. like um it, you know where it's super stretchy and it's very stretchy yeah, and yeah we'll I, I i doubt i mean i don't know but like i think what you're saying trend is like if, if pixar were to take this character they wouldn't add brows to it perhaps and add anatomy to it they, they probably would add kind of stretch the hell out of it and do something crazy i mean obviously they have some very interesting facial work there yeah, yeah. when i try to analyze what they do they have it's people there who are masters of anatomy too sure um, but on the other hand, they also have, yeah, the cartoony style um, can sometimes be completely void of any of this in the anatomical stuff. Did you did you look at any uh, animated stuff at all for these shapes, or no? You just did it based off of a lifelong. Uh... I, I have done, even though a lot of my personal work is heavy on facial anatomy, even though some of it is stylized, um, but it's still stylized with a lot of detail and 
and and you could call it realistic, I guess. But the I do at work. I do a lot of st stylized. Um, fully cartoony is more rare, but I'll do that. I did do that a few times at Blur. Okay. Times. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I knew I had some experience with it. I've never had anything like this again. This is really weird. <laughs> a first. <laughs> weird. But um, I, you know, so I felt confident that I I knew how to do cartoony, and I didn't really look at anything honestly. That's cool. The company that that, that I like um, that does cartoony stuff, especially the faces. Tran and I are always big fan of their stuff. Is Leica. Where it, it never oh, gets it, crazy, yeah. but we like sometimes we're like the smile if he's shy, the smile just moves over to the side completely. And it makes no yeah. sense. Why why is the mouth just yeah, yeah. but it, it works beautifully, especially because it's got that pop feel to it. Yeah. You know, now you then now that you mention it, um, I mean this guy would obviously be almost impossible to, His mouth is to, to do that yeah. on him. There's just not enough space here. Yeah. But um, there is asymmetrical shapes here, right? Where are they? I thought I did asymmetrical shapes. It will be interesting to see. I mean, I'm going to do a very solid pass with a lot of combos, etc. That, that'll, that'll give you soon. But I think the if you guys want to experiment with something like that, you know, just for a specific shot or whatever it is that you have in mind, that will be the next step that we'll talk about. Once everything else works, then we could think about something crazy like that. But but I don't I, I don't, don't imagine. You, I, don't we you need it. It. I, I think we'll save that for when we do the feature film version. Right. Just because yeah. you could go down a crazy rabbit hole of combination shapes for something. Yeah. I mean, in the end, you know, if it doesn't work, you just scrap it. It's going to have so much in it anyway. That's just for like. Yeah, I don't think we could do anything like that. But just take what could we do that's completely out of the ordinary for this yeah. guy, like yeah. completely off the wall. I mean, I can't even think what that might be, but could yeah. be worth thinking about. The one thing you did say that I really do like, I'm gonna make sure we do this because you're completely right. Is those ears have to have much more life to them? Yeah, yeah, they can't just remain still. Yeah, um, they got a wiggle or something. Because I don't think our rig right now has any controls for that, but I I think um, we need to have well, that. I could. It, it's not within the realm of the because it's the you're doing the iPhone thing or whatever. Um, it's not within the realm of the shapes, but you know, if, I don't know how you would handle it if I added shapes that are outside of that. That that would be fine because because most of the, the way the, so the pipeline that we use on the voice in the hollow to make this possible is we realize that the majority of the shots in a film are characters, especially on the voice in the hollow, are characters literally just looking at stuff, looking <laughs> happy or sad. And for that, we're like, okay, we'll do that with the with the mocaps, mocap access of capturing the face. And then whenever they talk, we consider those like, okay, that's a hero shot for us. We still did it with Mo CapEx, but all of those shots had to go to an animator and they they fixed it, they tightened it up, they adjusted the expressions, they made it better. So just because we're using that doesn't mean that we're not gonna go in and hand animate a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially this guy because he barely says anything. He just says oh, yeah. he just says mayo and then one other word. He only right. talks with two words at a time. Uh, and then the I'm rest hoping is going to be you're going to exploit this range, like yeah, he's going to be very expressive, isn't he? Or yeah, so yes, yes, well, but not necessarily talking. Not yes. necessarily yes. talking. It makes it easier in a way because um, talking with these lips is going to be very challenging. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. I could. The other thing, the other thing when he says mayo, you'll be able to use the press shape. Yeah, oh, yeah the press shape is nice. The other cool thing about Mayo is that he walks on the ceiling. So a lot of the times he will be upside down. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Well, we need to have like a blood rushing to his head uh, and animation um, texture, animated texture. He's the only threadling that can walk on the on walls and stuff. So he, the first time he appears in the shot, 
is like a really dramatic shot and all of a sudden he walks into the frame upside down and he's like looking around with his eyes looking in every direction trying to figure <laughs> out how he got there and we kind of want the audience to feel exactly what mayo's thinking like where am i what the hell's going on and he's just like looking around and the audience is going to be like wait a minute we thought this was like a dramatic scene what the fuck is this character doing upside down and that's why he has a cape because the cape would just hang down nice. uh, and we were like what the hell is this guy doing here so he's going to be those eyes are going to play such a big uh part in him looking like he's kind of lost because when you look at a chameleon they always look like they're trying to figure out where the hell they are right. <laughs> <laughs> where the hell am i again yeah so, yeah, yeah one, one of the things i love about this is like even those little uh little snippets that you showed me it's just there's so much humor in it so yeah, yeah i'm just really looking forward to seeing what, yeah, what we can probably plan. show some 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 new stuff. I don't know if you have to go, but if you do, uh, it's all good. But if not, we're gonna show some some of the stuff we've been working on this week. If you just want to hang, if if you yeah, gotta go, I'll hang out. Can I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll share our screen. Oh, you're doing it. Okay. So I'll go. I'll go first. So let me just hide this guy here. So all right. So I'm taking your screen off. So all, up to now, all the tests we've been showing for. Um, for the characters have been using uh, Mixamo. So let me pull this guy up here. So not this, these are just like little renders of the characters. Oh, that's great. I haven't seen that. Oh, so cool. So we did, yeah, we did these tests. Um, did these tests for a pitch document that we're doing. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, and then, but where is it? It's cotton mayo. Okay, here it is. But the all of these tests have been done in uh, Mixamo, so it's not using our rig at all. Uh, and all of these have cloth sim on top. So even though they look like they're very far along, these are actually very not far along because there's no rig on these. It's it's just it's like Mixamo, some, yeah, yeah, which is amazing for us to be able to do these tests. I remember at Tippet, their turntables used to always have the characters doing movement and walking around and it was just such a better way of getting a sense of the you character were able to do this without a rig the what did you say you were able to do this without a rig yeah these are not rigged i mean not 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 technically rigged so all we're doing is we're using you ever, you never ever use mixamo no dude take a mixamo look is an auto rigger no but it's more than just an mm -hmm. auto rigger. that this, has like a yeah let I'll me look. just show it because it, yeah. it's really it's really an amazing tool. Uh, let me just. Is that where you got the motion capture too? Yes. So we we do have our own mocap system, but early on in the process, we don't even know if the clothing can simulate correctly, right? So we use this is the program where you just go online, right? So you can first of all you could select a character, but you could load up your own character. So. Um, I'm just going to use an, a pre-existing one, but you could literally load any character you want. Uh, let me just try to see if I could upload something. Uh, give me one second. I'm not sure I'm going to have something right away, but let me see. Uh, Oh, I know, I know where I have one. Okay, so give me one second. So let's do. Uh, uh, da, da, da. So I'm just gonna throw this guy in here. And I think this is just like the body without any of the clothing. So just give it a second. All right, so you have caught. You can see how basic he is. Um, and all you basically have to do is tell it where the chin is, where the wrists are. You can see it is mirroring it right away, which is a great, the elbows. 
uh, the knees, and then the groin. So again, this is not going to get you uh, Planet of the Apes, but for early tests, this is great. So once you have that, you just go to next, give it a second. And the fact that this is all happening online, by the way, is just insane. That's insane. This is happening in a freaking browser. Auto rigging. So. And it's for free? Oh, it's totally for free. Yeah, you just make an account uh, and that's all you need. How do they make money? Well, it's Adobe. Oh, okay. They, yeah. I, I don't know um, how they how they make money. Have you ever tried those videos? I have not tried those AI video mocap. So someone is asking. Uh, yeah, chatting yeah. on fire is asking. Yeah, I have I haven't tried that, but um, I'd love to. I mean, we're using uh, a nice system, the XN system. So there you go. So you can see he's already uh, ready to go. So. Now he should pop up here and now I could just go to animations and there's dozens and does hundreds of animations. So I could just come over here and go like Roomba dancing. Right. And there you go. So when you're doing yeah. early, early tests, like this is freaking fantastic because immediately you could be, you could see the character, you could get a feel of him wow. and when, when Tran is doing, um, but of course it doesn't include fingers, right? Cause you didn't define those. So it I, think, never... I think there might be a way to define them. There is some hand. It does um, pick up some hand animation. But not all the mocap has uh, hands. Yeah, some of them uh, don't have any fingers. So. so, but you could see pr it's pretty cool. So if you're doing these tests, you could, you could see your character right away. Okay, so you have stuff like oh. character yeah. arm space. So I could bring this a little bit closer. So it feels more like he's actually clapping. You know what's tragic though is that the auto skinning here is so much better than Maya. <laughs> yeah, and it this, this yeah. would be breaking as a default. Yeah, so pretty cool. Immediately, Tran could run this into Mixamo and see how the the clothing behaves when the character is doing a run, which is why we do the run test because that's like the most demanding stuff, right? The, the rest of it is just standing and talking, but the runs, the jumps, those are. Um, so that ones. animation that you have, that's from here? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, it is just the most generic run ever. Can I see that? Uh, yeah, it's I mean, let's just find it. It's called I mean, you don't have to, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just getting carried away. I'm so curious. Uh, is it this that, one? Yeah, the first one. Yeah, look, it's the most boring. Huh. But I mean, look at a... when you look at the thumbnail up on the top left, it doesn't even look like the same run. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that translates perfectly. Yeah, and you could, again, you could increase the arm space. So you could almost make it do a different type of performance because by increasing the arm space, now he looks goofier when he's running, right? Sweet. You can slow it down. For the dramatic, you know, the friend is about to get eaten right. shot, or you right. can speed it up. Um, you could mirror it, and you could also set this thing up, which is in place. So for video game guys, that's how they do it, so that the root is controlled by the by the controller, and then you'd be able to, to blend into any animation. So pretty incredible. Once you're done with it, you just go to download. It's going to ask you, do you want uh, 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever, with skin or without skin? What so do you usually do? 24 or 60? 24. Uh, do you want any uh, keyframe reduction? I just, you'd leave it to none. And then what format? And then that's it. And then you just bring it into Maya and you could um, use it. So these are usually small snippets, but they're loopable. So... Once it goes to the end in Maya, you could just set the, the keyframes to basically go on forever. So he'll run for eternity. But, but so, but what you get is a, you get the rig itself. You'll get everything. Yeah. So let yeah. me just show you. So I'll just go to download. So with skin. So let's just download this guy. 
You just blew my mind. Now, how much time I spent rigging this character that I just did. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's supposed to be even other uh, auto riggers out there, which we're we're gonna. Yeah, I used the Maya one, right? Uh, yeah, but, but I spent so much like time skinning on top of it. Okay, so I, I got it. If I, if I uploaded a really complex, realistic character, would it do such a good job? We use this for some some pretty complex stuff, and it works. It works I'm not sure well. sure how well it would been been on something real. Like these guys, is like you kind of forgive if the elbow is not right, you know? Right. They're like sausage bodies, <laughs> so. I mean, there's a lot of work you do on top of just a base rig anyway with a realistic character, but just having nice, clean skinning as a starting point and a nice, clean rig to work with is is amazing. Let me see if and I'm no rigger. There may be a million other options to do it, but when I tried doing it myself in, in Maya, it wasn't. I ran into so many issues. So there you go. You have your rig. Wow. You have all your joints. And then uh obviously you can see the deformation is not it's not right. great. Right, right, right. So it's not, it, didn't, it didn't do a perfect job, but how would it even know where the head begins and where it ends? Exactly. And and some of it um you could probably I could probably go back into Mixamo and, and try to position the chin right better. You wouldn't try to do it in Maya in this point. No, no. I would just try it a few times like that. And then you can see it runs out of frames uh, pretty quickly. So you have, in this case, 13 frames, but you could just go to your uh, animation editor. You just go to your graph editor. And if I just grab everything except for the root, I could just select these guys, curves, post infinity, uh, cycle with offset. So now he's going to run forever, but you could see that he stops moving. And then you just select the top joint, which is your root. Uh, go back to your animation curves for that. And then that one, you go to uh, curves, post infinity. Um, I always forget which one this is. I think it's just, uh, I think it might be psycho with offset. Let me see. Yeah, so that it, they were they were all that. So there you go. So now he's just running wow. forever. Very cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, when you first you, when you first showed that to me, I was like, wow, the animation is so perfect. How'd you get it so perfect? <laughs> oh, no, it's not. It's super flawed. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's, it's, it has so much character, and it really has to do with with the the proportions of the character like you said it's yeah like, you know. so this week the what we ended up that doing so <laughs> um i don't i don't think yours looked that messed up i think i just placed a joint bad. so this week what we finally were able to do so so mind you the the um, clothing is rigged initially just for us to essentially throw it away so it's rigged initially just so we can kind of see what the hell the clothing is going to look like. But you're going to see the clothing looks terrible. It, it all breaks, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's basically throw away. We could then use that yeah, just to kind of visualize it. But then at the end, we just grab the clothing and we delete it. And all of this would get simulated. Yeah. Right. Not this right. clothing. This clothing is going to get uh, weighted yeah. because it's, it's right. tight to the body. But what we did this week is finally transfer everything onto the rig to make sure that it could work on our rig. And this is actually a bigger deal for us because we're like, okay, the rig is working and the mocap is transferring and you could see it works yeah. pretty well. Uh, so this is now on our proper rig. Um, it's not a hard process to do this, but every time I do it, it seems I have really to re I have to relearn how the hell I did it because it's one of those things that I don't I'm not a, a rigger I'm not an animator so whenever I, I I do it then I don't touch it for eight months and then when I come back to it I'm like how the hell did I do that again and what's funny is I catch myself watching 
my own videos from the voice in the hollow to figure out how I did it, uh, which is just so funny. And we do that all the it's time. It's a good thing you're recording everything. Yeah, for real. So this was huge for us because we we're able to finally see uh, that it's working. And this is just a complete random animation that I found from the voice in the hollow. And it feels so freaking cute. When I'm seeing him walking around, he looks like a little shy guy. He looks like he's afraid. Mm -hmm. of... So we're, we're really happy with that. Obviously, the, the hands um, need work and whatever, but I don't think there's any mocap on the hands here. But uh, Oh, I think there is, actually. But but it's still pretty cool. One of the things we... we I only have one thing to say. You guys are having way too much fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like well, on a daily basis, you get to do this stuff. It is fun. But I also get very. Like, it's no, I'm sure when you're in it, you forget how fun it is. Uh, I, get, yeah. I get super stressed out. Yeah, <laughs> I I just can't wait to see the moment the faces and the and the mocap all come together is really going to be, you know, such an important moment. Um, you guys are making tutorials <laughs> for yourself about your own process. Yeah, we, we are. That's yeah. Funny. yeah, that's what that's what's happening. Yeah. It's funny. Um, I can't say who, but we were talking to, to someone and they were saying, oh, uh, so-and-so, a, a producer was very excited about your guys' work. They just, they almost feel like they're nervous that maybe you guys aren't really doing all of this yourselves, right? And we were like, it's all documented. You could literally go in and watch 90 <laughs> freaking hours of the making of uh, The Voice in the Hollow. It's the most boring 90 hours of your life, but it's all there. But um, right. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah. So this was, I was super happy with this. It took me freaking forever, and it, this is all using um, this here, which is the right. That's what I use. Yeah, for my guy. When yeah, I, you know. So we yeah. use this for the transfer. So transferring everything onto this, uh, right. it's it's so great. You can transfer the rig you got from Mixamo or whatever onto this. Yeah. Right. You want me to show you how? Is that like an no, it's, super simple. Like, it's like automated it's like built to do that or you're, you're well no that? it's not automated to do it but it's it's pretty simple so like let me just go back to mixamo for a second uh let's grab this one so i'm just going to download it but this time i'm going to do it without skin which is what i we always do once we get past a certain point so now i could go to download it'll download it again but now um without the skinning okay so now I'm in a completely clean file. And what I'll do is I'll go to file uh, import and I'll bring in that clip. Let me just find it. Oh, you guys froze up? No. Oh, they... I just. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like Mayo, like I just completely stopped talking and <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I thought your video was frozen. Yeah, Trent, really Trent, Trent literally some tells me that I'm basically Mayo. Yeah. So uh, you could see. OK, so this is the motion. So we have our 13 frames. So let's just do the same thing here. So we'll just come over here. We'll select all of these guys here. Uh, so uh, Windows Animation Editors, Graph Editor. So we'll just select all our curves. You cannot just select a top node and do this. You have to do it on on um, selecting all the joints. So cycle with offset, and then let's do this one here. Okay, so he should be running. So let's do like 100 frames. All right, so he's running fine. So what I'll do here is I'll select all of these joints um, over here. Again, you have to do it manually and then just set the rotation on all of these to zero. Set the translation and rotation here to zero. It's the same amount of joints as the Meyer rig? No, it's not at all. 
Uh, and then I'm going to add, um, I'm going to select, and it's very important that you select all the joints. You don't just click the yeah. top. And then I'm going to add a keyframe here. So now frame zero, it's going to be like that. And then it's going to pop into, into the run. Okay. So I do that at frame zero. Select all of these guys, or you could just select one of the joints. Come over here and go to create a uh, character definition. Right. So now I could just select this and then go to open and select HIK. And that should just set everything um, to work. It, it is working, even though you're getting this error message. It is working. It's just because these guys are rotated, but it's still going to work. So I'm just going to grab this whole file and then just go to file, save scene as, and I'll just save this, uh, I call this Shraga run. So I'll just save that. All right. So now if I open up my proper rig, uh, let me find my file. So I'm going to mayo out for a second here. Give me a second. <laughs> um, oh, snap. This guy is hot. Okay. Thing again. Yeah, just give me a sec. It's opening up. Okay. So now we'll just open up this guy. It sometimes gets a little bit wonky, but it, it should be fine. So let me just make sure this is all working. Okay. So now if I come over here, I'm just going to set this back to stance. So it just goes back to the default rig pose. Uh, then I'm going to set this to none. Okay, so that looks good. Go to File, Reference Editor. So I already have a mocap in there, so I'm just going to disconnect it. And go to File, Create Reference. And I'll load up the file that I just um, saved, which is just a Maya file with, uh, with the run. So let me see where that is. You must have figured out a lot of things about animation. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a bunch yeah. of stuff that I had zero interest in the world to figure <laughs> out. Do you still feel that way? Totally. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, with all the blending of animation that you had to do for, for, uh, for Voice in the Hollow, you, you I must mean, have become a little bit of an animator, right? Both well, of I, I did a lot of the cleanup for sure. Uh, I don't know if I would consider myself an animator by any means, but no, I, I, you don't need the title. I'm just I, saying. I I I, I, I got more of the time. Yeah. yeah, which at the beginning I, I didn't see it. So okay, so now I imported it in, so I referenced it in. So it's just under, it's just in the reference editor. So. Uh, Reference header, you can see Shraga Run is here. So once it's in there, because we already created a character definition in that Maya file of just the bones running, if I go under source, it's going to detect everything that has a character definition. So Shraga Run will now be in that list. And then here you will see him running. Total different bone, uh, bone count. And you can see sometimes you'll get some weird stuff happening. Wait, where did the weights come from? Oh, because you weighted him here regardless, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on there. Right. You can see the run is working, and then it's starting to get. Right. But when um, it works fine, that's basically all it is. So let me, let's go back and see, like, the run cycle one more time and see what's going on here. So something is happening with right. the, the bones. Yeah, yeah. So it's true to the, to the animation. So, yeah, so I, I think I know what it is. I think these guys, I'm, I'm setting them to uh, cycle with offset. It's incorrect. It's, and I, I knew that I was doing something wrong there. Again, because it's one of those things that 
I don't really do often. Um, right. I'm, I'm a, if you ask me in like a month, I'll, I'll become a master at this because that's now the stage that I'm at. But uh, right, right. So it's so, just so like you do like, all the technical troubleshooting yourself. Everything. Yeah. Yes, Miguel does a lot of crap. And I'm sure that's what like fifty percent of the time, or what? Oh, that's the whole time. Yeah. It's the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so okay. So what I was doing wrong is I was doing cycle with offset. It's, it, it shouldn't be cycle with offset. It should just be um, cycle. So curves, post infinity, uh, cycle. Um, and there's a way to visualize this. I forget how, but you can see. Um, yeah. So this animation might not be one of the loopable ones. Um, let's see, curves, post infinity, cycle. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong here. So, okay, what I did wrong here is um, I don't want to do uh, frame zero as cycle because then it's popping, um, you know, the the T pose. So I just have to go to uh, da, 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 da. let's set this to frame one. Those animation. So the only thing that, that I was doing wrong was um, curves, post infinity, cycle. It's that this guy should not be part of the of the cycle. So By the way, because I'm doing all these uh, all these combos for him, you guys are going to have to do a lot of plugging, like manual plugging of the combos in Maya, right? Because that's how we decided to do it. Yeah. How do you, yeah, that's something we have to figure out how it's going to plug in. But anyway, that's basically it. The only thing that we did wrong there was you don't want to cycle with offset with frame zero where he's in the in the in the neutral pose, um, and then it should work. So, yeah, but you can see pretty simple. So it doesn't matter what joints uh, whether they line up or not, whether one has more joints than the other. If you look at this guy here. Uh, da, da, da. he has a completely different amount of joints. Right. So do you, do you end up like using a lot of animation that you download that way? No, not really. We, we, right, cause you use we have, your own cap. Yeah. That being said, there was still a couple of, um, shapes that we didn't have that we did use from there. Yeah. Like kind of some actioning stuff. Yeah. So if you look at, let me go to Mixamo for a second. I'll show you. So if you go to search, you can go to like, um, I think it's a superhero. It might not be superhero. It might be adventure. see if I can just find it. There you go. This is voice in the hollow. When when uh, when Koa is being chased or chasing the anteater, Allah, Allah does the slide. Yeah, because we can't, we don't have the setup to get someone to do that. Yeah. But you know, you tie it in with a bunch of stuff that you did that was um, custom and Ideally, you, you, you'll never know that what is what, right? So. Yeah, totally. But yeah, but that's it. But yeah, you can see uh, this little guy. Oh, uh, blending between them is, you must have run into issues blending through. I don't, I blend it. I do it poor man style. I just do it in the edit. I don't ever try to blend the animation. I just, 
basically. Yeah, we do things like low tech. We're like, yeah. That's not, that's the voice showing the feed. Yeah. Until we need to, because <laughs> we because you have to worry about contact on the ground, right? And then uh -huh. we we have some shots like, well, we're hiding the feet. Let's just do this shot and we see the feet. And then there's we'll <laughs> barely any shots where you see them touching the floor. And and when you do, it's we do have a few strategically put in there close up so that you your mind goes, oh, we see the feet touching the ground. And then you just fill in the blanks. There's always like a plant in front, or there's a little mound of rocks in front, just because the mocap stage is flat, and then the ground on the voice in the hollow is obviously not. Right. So we didn't want to deal with that. We're like, let's just stick a bush. <laughs> so every every decision in that thing is like that, right? Like they're wearing masks because we don't want to animate every shot. Yes, and now right. we're still thinking of. And that so so then but we're like okay. We're not, but we have to make that part of the narrative or else it'll look like there's a, like we're trying to hide something. So we're like, let's make that the MacGuffin. They all want the masks. <laughs> so there you go. Are you for real? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The mask. It ended up being the logo of, of the entire show, right? Yeah, that's, that represents we don't want to animate. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, but you could see like the rig here is pretty crazy for the head. Um, probably more crazy than it needs to be because all this stuff is going to be simmed anyway. Right, right, right. So what? Yeah. Right. But it will be nice to have the control if you need it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Right. So, that's, so think that's what you want to do for his ears in that sense. Yeah. And, you know, if, if there's, there's probably some things you can do with shapes there too. Yeah. But, I mean, that's up to you. And if you, you know, let me know if you want me to do that. Huh? Shapes on which guy? I'm talking Mayo. Yeah, yeah. On the ears? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we could, because they're also like buttons, right? And you could, they, they kind of resemble his eyes a little bit, right? But you don't want to go too crazy there because it's yeah. weird. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I just think maybe, you know, flapping back would be good and just up and down would be good. Yeah, I, I, I think that'd be awesome. Wanted, but you could do that with a rig too. I think you could do it with a rig, but you could you'll never be the art direction of um, of a modeler. No, it won't, but if it's really basic yeah. motion, then you don't really need that extra fidelity. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's just if it's literally going up and down, because then the advantage of it not being a shape, there is an advantage that if you just have a joint. You can freeform the rotations and the and the motion, right? Yeah. And with shape, you're in in some ways. There's also, you know, you'll have those shapes, and that's all you can do, really. Uh, how to decide what part of the body you rig? I, I think um, you you want to kind of rig anything that you want to be able to have control over. Uh, so an animator to control over. Um, the reason why we're saying we don't we wouldn't rig these guys is just because we're simulating all the clothing and i think one of the big uh selling points that makes this little guy look so cute is the bobbing of of the little balls right if, if an animator had to hand animate that it would just be a nightmare yeah that's a lot of effort where you went into designing it so that it does do that yeah like that wasn't that was not accidental it took a long time yeah, like these guys have to look, you know, this is serious business for them. And they're, this is like the Jedi, like this is as cool as they're going to look, right? So they, they don't look goofy amongst themselves, but we want people to laugh when they see these guys taking things really serious. So, which leads me to what Tran is going to show now, which is the Obi-Wan Kenobi type character, the, the Dumbledore Um and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so uh, I have this in substance. We'll do full screen. So this is Professor Cuso, which is based named off of one of the samurais from Seven Samurai. <laughs> That's great. He's, he's super serious. Uh, I mean, I just started. I'm going to try to finish him as much as I can. Um, I don't have. We don't have a lot of time. He's a cranky old guy who had his arm ripped off by a moth when he was younger. 
Yeah. So he's very cranky. And we're not show, show the arm. Uh, yeah. Hold on. It's going really slow because they have shadows and all that stuff. Just Is this guy talking? Is what? Is he gonna talk? Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna talk, but he's got no arm. He's here. got no arm, and he's uh. Yeah, he is like I said. He's like the 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 wise wizard. Yep. He's the one that is like really strict on the students because they've never felt they've never dealt with a moth directly, and he has. So he's the one that is. They think he's an asshole because he doesn't let them graduate, but it's because he's really concerned for what's out there, right? Yeah. And um, and he's uh again he's the the older one. With his his little wrinkles, <laughs> yeah, and and stuff. Um, he's also got. Let's see, we can pull this back. So the way it works, just so people know, is like the the threadlings is the colony. They need to go get these crystals from these mines. Um, that's why they have to leave the colony. These crystals are basically used as the soul of a threadling. So they need to go harvest these crystals to then create more threadlings. As they leave the colony, that's where the moths attack them. So they send the miners, which are these d different little characters that don't talk, uh, to go to go mine these crystals, and then they send these mages, these warriors, to protect them. And they're like the Jedi's. So this guy in one of the uh, expeditions was attacked and nearly died, and he's the only person who has survived a moth attack. Yeah. Um yeah. He's also got. He lost his arm. He lost, he lost his, his arm. arm yeah. He's got buck teeth too. He's got two teeth. He's got a big gap <laughs> between. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's like real serious, but when you see his animation, if you were to see it, I can load it up. Give me one second. Let me just kill some of this because it's hard. He's looking great, Tran. You saying you're still designing him? No, he's his design. The textures. Yeah. Oh, I see. So we're in the the design is done. Yeah, it's um, great. And then the what goes just so you can see what goes into our clothing. That's probably the longest part to finish designing. It's and it's because the clothing has to simulate. So you can make uh, make stuff in marvelous, and it will not work. It can't sim, so it has yeah. to be readjusted like that. It just is uh, unmovable. So the characters go through quite a bit. Wow. So I'll, I'll show you an animation. Remind me, what, what do you use for simming? You use Marvelous as well for simming. Yeah, we just keep it. We're so low tech. <laughs> Marvelous, so Marvelous has been uh, actually even like working with us. They've been they've been on the stream and everything. Like yeah, since, yeah, yeah, yeah since this is all cloth based, they've been um, they've been really cool with us. Wow. Yeah, they came on the stream. Um, I gotta check that out. Let me hide some stuff. So we have some comments on them. Is there a plugin for Maya to, to like simulate with Marvelous? Uh, yeah. No, nah, we just get an Alembic out of here. Oh, so, you do you do the sim in Marvelous? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, Rico left. Uh, just you could write it in Spanish. Because uh, I think I'm having a harder time reading reading it. Just, just write it in Spanish. So this is what he looks like <laughs> with his little <laughs> collar. I mean, he's all bouncy too. Yeah. So you can true. see his hat, and that goes through quite a bit of test because sometimes the hat slips off. <laughs> Actually, quite a bit. Like it falls down, and then he's bald. Um, this one was tricky because it's like full of air. You right. know, it, it gets stuck in a lot of stuff. So you can see he's wearing the mage robes, um, like. Hot. so they 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 have the hoodies and one of the things that we started thinking is like as you become more senior you lose instead of like getting a black belt like they start removing the little cotton balls from your head until you have no cotton balls <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's play this one so there's another test so it's a it goes through multiple things um i like how his his head his hat shakes at the end. Hey, he's <laughs> <laughs> so uh these are kind of tricky to get to to work, like his little head thingies. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's funny. 
you're having way too much fun. Well, it, it goes through <laughs> like some so really cool. bad stages where he steps on his skirt and then his pants falls down. Every like it goes through disastrous. Yeah, stuff. I'm sure there's there's all the nightmare, but you lose sight from how fun these characters are. I'm sure. Well, I do have fun. I do think it's um, you know, trying to see what you can get. Here's this other one where he's gonna oh, kill. Oh yeah, that's him. great. Yeah, that's... there was there was a lot of issues with just the collar, just trying to, you know, his head, and then redesigning his body at the same time. So like during this process, um, his clothing goes through change, but some changes on his body happen too. So like if the neck was too short, I had to shorten it. The neck was shorter. Um, the collar would just implode. So we had to lengthen the neck. And then once that's all done, then the characters re apologized and. Um, and then it could be UV and then sent to the rigor. Yeah, the robe was originally uh, longer to be more like Obi Wan Kenobi, but it, it was too problematic. It was super problematic. Um, let's see if I can pull. Like every decision we make is uh, to simplify our lives, right? It's, we, we never can be like stuck on something to the point where we're like, no, it has to be our way. Like, no, it has to be what is the most efficient way. So this is here, like th this is an earlier version where his shape is a little bit different and right. he's got these longer robes and everything. Uh, and then this went through that test. Oops, the first time, it takes a second. Uh, it's not looping. And there's all kinds of problems. Like first he steps on it, so you're like, oh, okay. And that like, because his you know proportions are odd so the skirt can be too long. Um, and then this is like flying all over the place. And you can see all this tearing on the mesh and inner penetration. His hands get stuck in it. So when his fingers get stuck, it pulls everything uh, off. And you can see how this shoulder pad, um, anything, when you see in the dark, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. And then I, the hat here, you can see it was about to fly off. So that's probably the longest. You have, but you have Marvelous Designer helping you troubleshoot this kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, I basically do it, and then I sim it. And then when it doesn't work out, I just go, well, let's just remake this um, so that it does actually work. So in terms so of the model, model, you don't put constraints on it and whatever? No. Uh, I, to answer your question, Shrug, yeah. about the Marvelous Designer, so what, what we ended up doing was – so Tran has been using Marvelous for a while. So we had them come in and Tran basically had a list of like, hey, I've been using Marvelous forever. These are issues that I have. And then she kind of like, with Megan, right? Yeah, it was Megan. Megan uh, helped. Uh, like Megan and the, the team. So it was yeah. pretty cool. Um, and then they gave us some settings uh, and it all worked. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was really awesome. So here's one where I had a different idea for the hat but it was shimmering too much. So you could see like it was really popping and it wasn't holding. So the cloth can tend to do that. Um, I wish this one worked because it's really weird. <laughs> so like these tubes, but it's shaking too much. So then it goes back to redesigning it so that. Show the back of the, the head. I really like the design stuff you did there. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's it's fun. I'm definitely making stuff that I've never made in Marvelous. Like, what is this? <laughs> These weird things. So. Oh, actually, I do have one more thing I wanted to show. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. And now that he's done here. Um, do you mind zooming in on his face, John? I'm just curious. Yeah. I don't have shadows on. Let's turn it on. Computer's gonna get hot. Did you want to see something on his face? Yeah, I'm, well, I don't know if we should uh, sideline. My my only I have a, my only concern for this guy is how is he going to raise his eyebrows? I have thought about that. You mean? You have it? I have. So what, oh. are you, what are you thinking? Well, let me see his wireframe. I need to. Oh, his wireframe! It does not flow with these cracks at all. Uh, so uh, Rico left is asking, how do we make the clothing look so realistic? That is with Marvelous Designer, Rico. Can you see it, Shara? 
Yeah, yeah. If you go, if you can rotate it so I can see underneath the brow. Oh, hold on. Like a little bit more. Yeah, like that. Oh, I see. Let me kill. I see. So there's an there is an undercut there for the. Yeah, for the there's wall. a um, there's a lid tucked in. I see. Okay. Like that, and then uh, it's really compressed though. Mm. But I know because he's really big down here. But the loops do follow. Yeah. All the way around, at least. Yeah, look, we, we could talk about this guy. Uh, oh, it would be if, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if you. <laughs> no, I'm not saying, not saying anything. I just, I would like to help you figure it out for sure. Sure. He's really cool. So yeah, he's uh, he's, I don't know. That's his topology. I tried to stick to just human. He's more human. He's got a nose. Yes, for sure. But, you know, the, the nose is kind of different because yeah, um, yeah, it's really cool. Because he's got a different nose. I but, love I love your guys' designs because it's it's just it is cartoony, but in a unique way, right? I mean, so many characters you see that are cartoony just repeat the same thing over and over again. Well, that's a big thing is we don't want it to look like Pixar stuff at all, right? Yeah. And we love we love Pixar, but we yeah. But, Pixar already exists, and we right. don't want to be like the the, the shitty Pixar. <laughs> no, yeah. a million percent. I, there's something. Uh, you think that loops are very fine? original about what you're doing? You think that loops are fine? I, I think you know we could talk about this afterwards. It, yeah, send it to me, and I'll have a look at it. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, are you done with this? Yeah, I'm done. So last thing, uh, we I think I showed this already last time, but this is the very last thing, is just seeing them all together, um, just getting the scale of these guys to the moths. Um, it's kind of cool. Let me put a light in here. Uh, make it. So yeah, it's really cool to see um, to see this all come together and uh, yeah, and the moth is uh, has been retopoed and UV. Um, I'm gonna wait on the textures a little bit on the moth. Do some environment stuff next. But you know they they are big nasty monsters and um, that's something that we really wanted to to convey is that a real danger. The way we pitched it this this week to a few uh, people is, you know, we want it to be like Fraggle Rock if it was invaded by Xenomorphs from Alien. <laughs> so that's really, that's really it. So, yep. um, but you can see the scale difference is, is gonna be pretty brutal. So just picture the the, the professor firing his stuff at this thing, at the, a swarm of these things as uh, they try to eat these little guys. So. Yeah. And in the story, like they don't encounter these guys like all the time. So our main characters um, don't have experience. Whereas the professor, you know, has. He's the only one that has seen them off and, and is survived. alive to tell. Yeah. You should just end up dead um in this world yeah so but well, you can see mayo is the smaller one of the two yeah he's a little guy he's a little guy so but anyway um uh, so rico's asking if this is for any studio in particular it's for us it's for our studio yeah our studio is Calls half empty studios, half Miguel, half Tran, and we're pessimistic as hell, so we're half empty. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's very good to me. That's good. Uh, but yeah, guys. So that's it, dude. Shraga, thank you so much for yes, thank jumping you. in. Does yeah, my pleasure. It was fun, right? I told you it was easy. Yeah, it's great. It's super chill. <laughs> and I learned a lot, honestly. Um, 
this was really and I, and I love seeing what you guys are up to. So thanks yeah. for hanging out with us. And, yeah, it's what it is. It's, a hang out. it's always fun. Uh, they asked if this is V-Ray. So no, this is uh, uh, Unreal. Yeah, it's all Unreal. Um, does anybody have any any last questions before we go? And maybe we'll get Shraga back in here later with Chris once we're done with all the faces. Um, if we, if, if you want to, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, be nice to see his face. The what? Would be nice. To, it would be nice to see his face. I was saying. Oh, the, oh Chris. Was, yeah. Yeah. Last time we met, it was uh, faceless. You have not seen Ginger Sub sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. And and when you come down to LA, maybe we could all hang out with him as well. Yeah, that's for sure. That would be awesome. No question. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys want to follow our work, follow us on Instagram and Half Empty Studios. By the way, um, oh, let me just share one last thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me just find it. Uh, da, da, da. One second. So we will be at uh, at Annecy. There it is. Are you traveling? Yeah, we're gonna. We got invited to go. Um, to go speak at Annecy yeah. for um, for Epic. So we're gonna be. This is not the. This is not the talk. I mean, this is one of them. Tran is doing two talks, um, but we're doing one on uh, on the Voice in the Hollow, um, which will be pretty cool. So yeah. I'm doing two talks, but being in France is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Super awesome. So we're super excited about that. Um, so let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, I can't find it. It doesn't matter. But we'll be we'll be at uh, at Annecy, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, and that's it. So thanks everybody, uh, and. Um, Talk to you guys soon. So shrug it. So oh, this is super nice. What look what Bobby's saying. Fantastic runner. Heard news about Seagraph. Thank congrats. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just show that one last thing. I swear to God, this will be the last thing. <laughs> right. So let me just find that. So this was really cool. Uh da, da, da. this here. So uh, Voice in the Hollow uh, won uh, the jury's choice at SIGGRAPH, which is pretty cool because it's, you know, oh. our, our peers. Uh, so that's really awesome. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So we're super excited about that. So, but yeah, that's it. So thanks, everybody. Um, Shrag, thanks again. And then, uh, so we're going to put an outro and then you could just, just log out. Can I do that? All right, so let me kick this off. Thanks, everybody. And um, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Bye bye, everybody. See you guys. Later.